Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everybody, we will uh, we'll have a different lecture today uh, of, uh, of applications of optimal control theory. And so far we have seen uh, uh, linear quadratic regulator design a uh, lot of details about that okay. and then we have also seen this uh, this flight dynamics uh, in fair detail actually. So, we will go back and try to kind of uh, relate these two concepts and then uh, can ask the question whether we can do this uh, this missile guidance. Uh, uh, using LQR, okay. So that is that's the topic of this lecture, uh, and let's have a quick glimpse of uh, what all we can do through LQR theory. And very nicely, it will fall down uh, to the same classical control. Uh, I mean, cases and all that we'll, we'll derive it and so. And one of that you have already seen in one of the previous lectures actually. But here we'll have a different case derivations and things like that. And ultimately, you'll be able to see little more generalization of that concept. Uh, in addition to what you what classical uh, theory gives us actually, I mean classical missile guidance theory gives us. All right, so the topics of this lecture is some something like this. A little bit basic fundamentals of what are missiles, what are classifications, what are components, things like that. Then uh, one quick glimpse of what is this philosophy of uh, this so-called proportional navigation guidance. Okay. Then we'll try to revisit this LQR theory, and then uh, then formulate the problem in the framework of uh, linear quadratic optimal uh, control, and come up with uh, optimal missile guidance actually. Then in that framework, we'll study various uh, classes actually, uh, mostly in 2D. This is proportional navigation guidance, augmented proportional navigation guidance. Uh, then the same derivation through this uh, zero effort missed uh, concept okay, of the PN guidance. And also aspect angle constant guidance actually. We will have some uh, concluding remarks uh, at the end of the lecture. So, very quickly some, some basic fundamentals of uh, missiles and then components things like that. So, classification of missiles you can have uh, various classifications and uh, the very basic thing that comes to mind is either you have surface to surface, surface to air or surface to air or air to air or air to surface. And when somebody talks about surface to surface that can either be strategic. Okay, or can be simply tactical. Okay. So, strategic missiles have uh, typically large impact, they normally carry a, uh, I mean some sort of a nuclear warhead and things like that, but then uh, they are normally not used, uh, very very rarely used. I mean so far we know that only one time it was used in second world war that is all actually. But uh, tactical missiles which are uh, limited imp impact but targeted impact. And that is where uh, the usage becomes much more because, because you do not want to have collateral damage and you do not want to have unnecessarily large damage and things like that actually. So, that is where tactical missiles come in. Then surface to air is largely defensive nature in okay. case so, if, if you know for sure that uh, some so enemy is attacking and all that before it does some harm we have to kind of nullify that. So, that is the surface to air sort of uh, missiles. Then air to air is all. Uh, all I mean, it is also kind of a defensive missile, or I mean, the, it is something like air combat uses. Then air to surface is is largely uh, attacking sort of thing actually. Okay, so all sort of things, uh, different classification somebody can do uh, in various things. In a different sense, they can also be classified in different different ways. Uh, if, uh, somebody can talk about tactical versus strategic. Uh, we I already talked a little bit about that, and then somebody can also talk about exoatmospheric versus endo atmospheric okay that means the finally the interception happens beyond atmosphere so that means uh, aerodynamic forces and movements uh, are not valid there okay or it can have endo atmospheric engagement where uh, we are still talking about engagement within atmosphere actually okay so obviously aerodynamic force and movement play a large role there then you can classify from ballistic versus cruise okay the ballistic missiles uh, largely follow so called ballistic trajectory. In other words, the motion is largely influenced by only gravity okay, or uh, possibly by drag only, but there cannot be any lift and things like that. Okay. 
All right. Then on the other hand, there is a cruise missile. It's almost like aircraft. Uh, very close to Earth, it travels and then travels for a short range, long range, depending on the mission and things like that. Or largely it travels because of the lift, like aircraft. There are various pros and cons. Obviously, I mean, ballistic missiles you can cover large distances with less energy, whereas cruise missiles is susceptible. I mean, it 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 has a good amount of uh, stealthiness actually. Okay, that means because of the Earth curvature. Unless and until the vehicle is very close to the target, that uh, the enemy cannot detect it actually. Okay, so that that uh, advantage of cruise missiles anyway. Uh, and then somebody can also talk about from long uh, long range versus uh, short range, depending on how far you want to go and things like that. And then there are criterions like solid propulsion versus liquid propulsion and things like that. And that's a major departure by the way. There are various uh, issues with respect to solid propulsion and, and liquid propulsion. Think one of that we will talk a little bit when we go ahead in the in the lecture series a little later actually. So and this is not end of the story. And somebody can, I mean various classifications uh, also exist other than these things, and it doesn't matter so much actually. The the fundamental physics remains same and fundamental ideas remain same in a way. But depending on the nature of the problem and depending on missions require requirement, all things can be different actually. So typically components of a missile you can. Uh, I can classify something like this. So there is something like a command signal receiver at the at the end, which uh, which can receive uh, commands from ground station radars and things like that. And then you have various components coming on. I mean, various components uh, of a vehicle is very tightly packed. By the way, the inside things, the space is very limited, and then is very tightly packed typically. And uh, here you can see there is a radom thing. Okay, so this is uh, this actually protects the vehicle from from aerodynamic uh, loading and all that. The, and this part is a very sensitive part. This is where you are all seeker and then uh, I mean the sensitive instruments sit actually. Okay, and next to that is warhead. Okay, and then flight control system can take care of. I mean somewhere situated somewhere here, and then you have this fins there, and then uh, I mean this wings here, and then fins here, things like that aer aerodynamically. Actuated surfaces. Then you have this uh, propulsion system somewhere here. Okay, and then uh, I mean this configuration is not unique by the way. I mean it can have various configuration depending on the design part of it actually. But largely, this these components are part of the vehicle. It has to have uh, propulsion. It has to have guidance system. It has to have seeker system. It has to have uh, I mean various other things. Warhead, of course. I mean it. Well, it has to have various other systems that are necessary for a missile actually. Yeah. All right. Modes of operation. Typically, when when we talk about, we are not bothered too much about propulsion structures, things like that. We are all bothered about uh, navigation, guidance, and control. So that's the primary motivation for for us to see something actually. So the navigation uh, uh, is nothing but determination of the current position. So it uh, all that it does is is using some sensors, and the and that's a big task, of course. Using some sensors, uh, it uh, finally finds out where the current location is. Uh, I mean, typically in the initial coordinate frame, actually. So that uh, we have this uh, so-called INS sensors, inertial navigation system. We have this GPS systems, and we have this diffuser of these, we have magnetometer. Many things are there, which actually tells us the current position of the vehicle. And in addition to that, the current velocity vector uh, coordinates of the vehicle as well. It, it doesn't talk only about the position. Okay. Uh, position and velocity it will give us actually, and uh, both in uh, I mean kind of translational the motion as well as in rotational motion. That means attitude and attitude rate also it will tell actually. Then after you know all that from navigation system, uh, the next task is the guidance, and that is nothing but determination of a strategy to dictate a flight path actually. Okay. So, in other words, we have an objective to meet, uh, going from point A to point B. So, this uh, this guidance system will come up with a strategy to to dictate a flight path actually. Okay. So, the aim obviously of the the ambition of that flight path is uh, is to lead the vehicle for a successful interception actually. Okay. So, the navigation followed by guidance, and that's what uh, largely we'll talk in this lecture. And after that is done, the next task is the next task is control. Where uh, or so largely it is known as autopilot in the, I mean in the missile community, and it is that, uh, I mean the objective here is determination of uh, of the required control forces and moments, so as to enforce the missile to follow the guidance command. Okay, this is uh, this gives the status of the vehicle, I mean the navigation system, 
then guidance gives the way to go I mean the flight path to take and all that and the control or the autopilot essentially generates all the necessary control forces and moments to ensure that the guidance path uh, is followed actually. It means the whatever the guidance is giving as a command it is actually getting tracked by the autopilot system. So, all the three are in, in unison really I mean if the one system fails somewhere the, the entire mission will go away actually. So, everything uh, uh, happen, should have uh, lot of correlation and everything is important actually for a successful mission. But in this particular lecture we will uh, we'll largely concentrate on, on guidance aspects actually. So, what is uh, guided missile formal definition sense uh, somebody can write it this way uh, a guided missile is a unmanned flight vehicle which is usually fired in the direction of uh, direction of approximately towards the target of course, you will not uh, fire in the reverse direction it has to be fired approximately towards the target and subsequently receive the steering commands to improve its accuracy and the steering command can either come from onboard sensors or with external aid also basically. Okay. So, that is the that is where the guidance uh, of missile concept is actually basically. And again you can uh, various guidance laws have been proposed in the literature over several years uh, and this if you uh, compile everything so this tactical missile guidance laws and all that and then you can have uh, various classical or empirical laws you can have various mathematically rigorous formulation and that is what you are going to do it uh, in this, this lecture particularly. Then you have this optimal control class of uh, uh, guidance laws and you can also have uh, something like predictive guidance which we will uh, slightly do later in this course. And then the differential games uh, ideas also which unfortunately there is no scope to talk about it here. But there are also nice ideas where uh, the capability of the target is equivalent of uh, our the missiles capability somewhere something like that. So, the target behavior is equally capable basically in that those situations this differential game guidance becomes much more useful actually. Okay. The kind of extension of optimal control theory you can say that we will not talk too much on that. Largely we will concentrate on optimal control based things uh, and then subsequent lectures we will uh, talk a little bit ideas on predictive guidance which is very effective actually. Okay. Anyway, coming back to that the classical and empirical thing can also be classified in some sort of a two ways. Uh, one is this uh, this conceptual uh, sort of ideas and then implementable sort of ideas actually. Okay, so, something can be conceptual means okay, it starts with very neat ideas and all that uh, and then it is a lot mathematical it is very rigorous so it is very appealing rather but there will be some sort of practical implementation difficulties and all that actually. So, the, those things will be slightly modified and then in uh, some I mean then the pro, this, uh, this side of the branch there is results actually. Okay. So, you have this P n class of guidance if you see P n falls in here proportional navigation is a true proportional navigation and pure proportional navigation. And if you also come from optimal control theory you will also land up with this uh, this T p n, P p n and augmented p n also basically. So, we will see that in this 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 particular class how this thing say uh, which has been already been proposed from geometrical consideration can also be mathematically rigorously shown that they are nothing but optimal uh, control I mean optimal guidance loss actually. All right, so this is a summary of all these guidance laws. And in general, overview sense, what is the a broader picture of a flight control system? The objective is uh, to deliver a flight vehicle from its current state uh, to a desirable final state using the available information and available actuation, okay, while satisfying all physical constraints on the vehicle. So you cannot uh, talk about ignoring these things. Physical constraints uh, such as like angle of attack constraint, lateral acceleration constraint, or even uh, various body rate constraints, etc. constraints, all sort of thing will happen actually. So those constraints is to be honored, and within those constraints, it has to deliver the flight vehicle from its current state to a desirable final state. Obviously, it has to be the target interception point and all that actually. All right. So that is the objective. Then. Uh, what are the desired terminal states then? There can be several applications in different ways. One can be simply radio problems so where things can simply come and join together and continue to go together. That means, position sense they will be very close to each other, but velocity sense there is no relative velocity between them actually. So, that means, they continue to coexist sort of thing. The very good applications uh, so for example, aerial refueling and then formation flying control and things like that actually. Then this is there is interception where we are we are largely interested in this lecture. 
okay, to nullify the target with appropriate interception. That means, velocity vector need not relative velocity should be as high as possible, while the position vector should be 0 actually, this interception. Then also like some desired terminal states can be simply orbital parameters when somebody talks about just launching a satellite. So, what is the final or final desired condition? There is nothing but uh, any orbital parameters on the orbit from where it will continue to circulate actually. So, that that is why depending on the various flight applications, aerospace applications, you can talk about various flight control system actually. Now, it talks about uh, available information, okay. what are the available information? First of all, own state vector, it is largely through the own uh, rich sensor information with uh, this information is typically very good, because the sensors are very smart these days, within they have their in capability is much much higher and then and the noise component is almost negligible actually. So, the own state vector is very much reliable and that is what uh, uh, is available from the INS system or enti entirely this this navigation system from the vehicle actually. Then the other available information is terminal position okay, for the stationary targets or the instantaneous relative position and velocity for the moving target either using a radar or seeker or things like that. Okay. So, in this case there is a need to estimate uh, where the target is likely to be at the final time and that is where you want to go not to the current position of the target, but where it will go at the final time that is where you want to go actually. So, that is that is what uh, the missile guidance concept is. Then there are actuators, so we have various sort of actu various types of actuator, we have aerodynamically controlled actuator. So, such as fins, canards, spoilers and things like that which are typically useful within uh, endo atmospheric engagement actually, okay, where you can generate uh, I mean lifts uh, and moments and then manipulate that. And, if, and these are very good because normally this aerodynamic forces and movements are what you call is they are available free actually. Well, not really very free because you have to uh, deflate the fins and things like that, but almost free in the sense uh, the, I mean the lift vector is anyway there you just have to tinker a little bit and then you get a huge impact on, on your vehicle actually. So, that is that uh, very little uh, effort, but the output is very good actually. So, wherever aerodynamic controls are available the recommendation is to go for that actually. Then there are thrust vector control, the such as like uh, engine swiveling, side injection, uh, uh, I mean mechanism, and the nozzle deflection mechanism, things like that, by which the thrust vector is purposefully deflected away from the missiles uh, axis, uh, missiles axis, uh, I mean own axis basically. Then you will get a lateral component of that, which will give you some sort of moment uh, to turn actually. Then there are uh, reaction jets, okay, you can also talk about cold RCS or hot RCS like that and uh, again depends on that cold RCS means you have just pressurized gas and just you let it go to expand through a nozzle, whereas hot RCS means you actually a small rocket engine sort of thing where you actually burn and get uh, get your thrust and then deflect it through, through different jets and all that. Anyway, so then, then there are diver thrusters such as vernier thrusters. These are typically located at the CG for very final corrections at the end actually, okay, it, it, because they are not the, the correction does not happen through moments here, it directly uh, happens through the uh, I mean through the translation motion of the vehicle, that means vernier thrusters are typically placed close to CG. So, directly it will translate uh, wherever you want, obviously the, uh, the capability will be lesser, so people do not do it just like that, but the very end. Suppose you want to correct certain small error, then it is uh, it's worth doing it actually. All right. So then, then uh, conventional flight control system is uh, is typically uh, designed this way. We have this outer loop guidance, obviously one loop, with inner loop autopilot. That means whatever guidance command gives, lateral acceleration commands and things like that, that inner loop has to track. And this inner loop is again divided, uh, it can be synthesized uh, either in two loops or more than two loops actually. Okay. So, that means the two loop means typically the guidance command gives us uh, body and gives us lateral acceleration uh, commands. Uh, the guidance loop will give lateral acceleration commands and then inner loop uh, autopilot will convert that first to body rates, namely pitch and yaw rates, and then uh, that is one loop, and then it will convert, I mean, then it will try to track those pitch and yaw rates using control surface reflection that is one more loop. So, minimum two loops are necessary in that and more on that people sometimes put integral feedback for better better performance and then you have these actuator loops uh, inherently sitting there things like that. 
So, you have at least one loop in the guidance and then inner loops uh, are there at least two loops in the autopilot. This concept was developed in around the 1950s uh, where many missile guidance uh, ideas also got developed. And then it also accounts for limited onboard computational capability because each of the loop means a, a small subsystem sort of thing. So, you do not have to computationally burden your system. Then uh, limited analysis and design tools are typically adequate because the uh, dimension of the system is not large, complexity is not large, things like that. And then the lower expectation on the vehicle performance was also a factor for, for, uh, for such a synthesis loop actually. And towards the end of this course, we will also see that the, these concepts can be re relaxed and people now talk about integrated design approaches, integrated guidance control things like that, where these loops can be minimized uh, as much as possible actually. Okay, then the next point is adequate for it, it turns out to be typically adequate for, for stationary and non maneuvering targets or rather little bit uh, maneuvering that means less maneuvering targets also it will do the job because it is the uh, guidance law and control design so gets several updates on the way basically that is why it happens. And ultimately though uh, it actually results in simpler guidance laws typically this PN for C, PN guidance for simple guidance like that it will result in that those are very simple to uh, implement also basically. So, what are the objectives and mechanisms of missile guidance? Objective is to control the position and velocity vector to cause interception subject to constraints. That is a straightforward objective. And mechanics of guidance is to manipulate the position through changes in the velocity vector. That is how we can influence that. So, you have to manipulate the position through changes in the velocity vector. But how do you do the changes in velocity vector? That, that is through the control. So, the control the velocity vector magnitude either by manipulating the thrust if possible or by minimizing the drag also that is another way of doing that, but that is only for range enhancement and things like that actually. I can also change the control vector magnitude by applying forces normal to the velocity vector that is the, uh, well veloc control the velocity vector uh, direction rather sorry. Okay, this is not magnitude, but uh, this is direction. Okay, you can always control the velocity vector direction, and that is what is done typically, largely, by applying forces normal to the velocity vector, and that is where the the course corrections happens actually. All right. So, what are the difficulties of missile guidance? Uh, first of all, target related information is not readily available. So, target related information target is not going to give us free actually. So, obviously, we have to estimate the target information uh, and that is a must actually. In fact, it turns out that uh, the final misdistance is a strong function of uh, target estimation behavior or properties actually. So, that is a very important factor we should not uh, miss out actually, even though you are not talking in this class basically. Anyway, so then the, what are the mechanisms for applying forces normal to the velocity vector? You can have a direct lateral thrust or something like divert thrusters or you can have uh, something like lateral components of the main thrust vectors, that is thrust uh, deflection and all that. So, if you deflect the thrust, there will be a uh, lateral component which will, which will generate moment and all that. And also there is a aerodynamic forces that can be generated by this angle of attack and side slip angles. If you can generate both together. Uh, especially you can do that when you have uh, two planes of symmetry uh, like four fins and all that in a, in a missile setting it is possible. So, so that means you can uh, consider the side slip angle as something like angle of attack and then it will be like uh, both angle of attack and side slip angle uh, can be generated is I mean utilizing the control surface reflections and that concept is called skid to, con skid to turn. And suppose that mechanism is not there, it, I mean the vehicle has only two big wings and all that, that is also possible uh, and especially for long duration uh, practical things, typically people do that to, to minimize the drag actually. So, when you have something like that, you have also longer time for, for doing your corrections and because of that, uh, there is a concept called bank to turn where you have the control influence is uh, given to the vehicle through uh, angle of attack and bank angle commands actually. So, either you directly generate force uh, fin deflections and generate two moments uh, in pitch and yaw and directly go there it's called skid and skid to turn or you have the bank in the appropriate direction and then apply the control. So, so, so that you can go towards that and that is called uh, bank to turn actually. 
and largely I mean uh, it is typically done skid to turn in missile things and uh, other applications such as aircraft or UAV control things like that they, they, they st these are typically bank to turn actually. There are several undesirable consequences also, everything does not happen uh, so nicely that we like to see and then first of all lateral force components uh, are not happening at the CG, the obviously they are, there are uh, undesirable moments actually and largely that they also result in non-minimum phase behavior especially when you have uh, tail control vehicle ok. And then the vehicles are also designed aerodynamically unstable, they are not designed stable by the way. Because they are design, they are design unstable because uh, to have better LYD ratio, lift versus drag ratio, lift over drag ratio, and better maneuverability also because lift will be high and all that actually. Okay. Hence, uh, the motion arising from the maneuver forces may destabilize the vehicle also. That means if you don't do a very careful exercise, the vehicle is inherently unstable. So if you excite a little more, and then it will go to rotational instability very quickly actually. Okay. And also remember that uh, large at lateral acceleration command is a sad reality. That means the targets are becoming more and more powerful, they have more and more maneuvering capability and things like that. So, we do not have the luxury anymore not to have large, uh, large lateral command acceleration. It, uh, I mean these modern day missiles are typically, they, they have to have large lateral acceleration, especially this, this defensive uh, tactical missiles actually. So, in for example, some air to air missiles also talk about 20 30 G of lateral acceleration actually, that is quite large actually. So, that is a sad reality. And uh, whereas the rapid command response is a bad necessity also, ok. So, that is where you have to be extremely careful that ok, something uh, some effects will not come which will destabilize the vehicle actually. So, these are typically difficulties of the missile guidance thing. Then applications of guidance theories that uh, I mean before you go ahead I thought it is uh, good to see this because uh, if even though without loss of generality we are talking about missile guidance here, but the same concepts can be used in several several variety of applications including torpedo guidance, robotics, smart cars, even collision avoidance ok. That means the missile guidance is all about collision, but you can also have problems exactly opposite where you can talk about collision avoidance, uh, uh, safety basically, safety considerations. And also use the similar concepts for formation flying, automatic landing, spacecraft docking, air to air refueling and what not actually. There are several, several I mean domain or applications uh, areas where this guidance theory is very much useful actually. All right, so let us go ahead with a little bit fundamental problem of technical missile guidance and see some of the concepts very quickly. So, something the engagement is typically like this, you have a target which is running away from in this direction with the, with the velocity v t and there is a changing vehicle which we call as missile which is having its velocity vector v m and ultimately it has to go and hit the target and normally it does not happen automatically. The whole idea here in the very beginning sense is something like this. If you continue to go in this direction it may not go because this may run away. So, you have to, you have to take a little bit course correction and the direction change essentially. So, that ultimately both of a, both the vehicle as well as the target will go towards the same intercept point actually and finally, they will intercept each other. So, this course correction is typically done by applying a lateral acceleration command which can either be perpendicular to the LOS vector or perpendicular to the missile's own velocity vector ok. Obviously, if it is proportional to the LOS vector ok, things has to be things are uh, mathematically good. Because ultimately this guidance relies on the philosophy that uh, the LOS vector should not rotate. But see if initially it can rotate, but after some time this LOS vector instantaneous position 1 for the missile and position 1 for the target, position 2, position 2 here. If you can uh, keep on joining that, then this LOS vector should remain parallel to each other, they should not rotate actually. So, that is the concept that was used in, in SIP guidance and all that uh, before. And that is where the concept uh, the terminology is borrowed like proportional navigation even though this uh, this is a guidance concept nothing to do with navigation really basically. Anyway, so this uh, these are the two variations uh, if you if your, aim is, uh, if your aim is to make sure that LOS vector does not rotate then the obviously the lateral acceleration command that needs to be applied is should be perpendicular to LOS actually. That is where it is mathematically more elegant ok conceptually that is the that is the thing. But again practical difficulty of implementation do exist. Because if you have uh, something uh, some something um, perpendicular to LOS vector, then obviously it will have a component on V along VM, and component along VM means component along th thrust axis direction typically, 
and that is normally not possible to manipulate. Okay. May have a drug, but drug is not a control variable. You cannot manipulate that actually. Okay. So the the idea idea here is why don't we apply a force which is perpendicular to the velocity vector then? Okay. Which is easy to implement uh, because it is, I mean I don't have to worry about uh, the other aspect that I cannot really implement uh, the other component actually because by by design I'm reflecting something which is perpendicular to velocity vector which I can generate through through my lift generation mechanism actually. So uh, so these are the two concepts and depending on that you can have two variations of that and if it is uh, something like perpendicular to the velocity vector it's called pure proportional navigation which is uh, the concept is like this you have this sigma dot which is sigma is the lowest angle with respect to arbitrary reference lines but what is more important is sigma dot so the guidance law talks about am equal to navigation constant n which is a number times vm velocity of the missile times sigma dot and uh, in on the other hand true proportional navigation tells that okay i will not apply it perpendicular to the velocity but i will apply it perpendicular to the lowest rather and my lateral acceleration command happens to be nvc times sigma dot and it's not vm remember the vc is the closing velocity along lo actually okay times times sigma dot again so this is the fundamental concept of uh, 2d missile guidance in general so now if you talk about engagement model and engagement models in 2d and all that you can have the same uh, so you can put a inertial axis frame and then probably it's uh, a, and in the y direction you can see that i can write uh, i mean the reference line that has to go to zero Whereas this direction, it should also go to zero. Then only it, it can happen. Then only it can intercept. So the y direction error will be killed through the formulation part of it. Whereas x direction error will be killed through appropriate kind of estimation of time to go rather basically. All right. Let's move on to optimal missile guidance. How do you formulate that and all that? So we a little bit comment that many classical missile guidance laws are inspired from observing nature. Something like PN guidance and all that. I mean, then there are control theoretic based guidance laws, and okay, that are usually based on kinematics or, and or linearized dynamics. And that is what we are more interested in this lecture. To come up with optimal control theoretic guidance laws, which are based on kinematics of the engagement, actually. But they are usually not very effective, even though they they can do the job with a larger warhead and all that. They are not very effective in general. So the later subsequent lectures we'll see how to make it more and more effective, actually. So in general, optimal control theory happens to be a natural tool to obtain the effective missile guidance law because we are we are equipped with a good formulation of boundary condition at the end. Initially, something may happen, but at t equal to t f, we can impose boundary conditions that we need, and that is that's the platform it gives us for formulating a problem and getting a solution history of the optimum of the control variable. In other words, the lateral acceleration variable actually. So typically, people have talked about 2D point mass equations. Uh, we have uh, talked about that in flight dynamics lecture also. That if you really simply take a flat Earth and non-rotating Earth, and that simply 2D point mass model, you can fix an axis system like that and come up with these two kinematic equations and these two dynamic equations. It doesn't. In, uh, this part of the equation doesn't even talk about target dynamics. But what you really inter are interested is having some sort of a formulation. Where the relative dynamics is accounted for actually between between target and, and vehicle. So that uh, let us see that very quickly, and then this is uh, what you are talking is 2D optimal guidance laws using LQR. And here the engagement scenario again we will go back revisit and tell okay what is my y double dot if I see that okay y double dot happens to be something like uh, 80 times uh, I mean cos gamma t okay uh, well 80 if you put a little bit Okay, if you put a voting, voting, vertical axis, then again this this angle is going to be gamma t basically. Okay. So this is because at cos gamma t in the vertical direction minus a m cos gamma n for the same reason actually. If you put it here, okay. all right. So we have talked about y double t, y double dot is like that. Again, you assume gamma t and uh, and gamma m. Okay. Uh, is very close to zero. Okay. Then it so happens that uh, cos gamma s are one, and you have y double t is eighty minus m. This is the dynamics in y direction that we will account for. There is nothing to do with any particular vehicle, and this is uh, something called uh, kinematic equation. In other words, I'll I'll confine myself to a generic formulation where I can generate this eighty accordingly. I mean, am accordingly basically. 
anyway. So, this is a, a small discrepancy also you can see here that V c whereas y double dot is a t minus a m the concept of V c that we are going to use in this lecture is V m minus V t not not V t minus V m actually. Anyway, so uh, we can change it if you really like to again the sign change will happen at the end actually. Anyway, so this is what it is. Uh, now, let us quickly derive this true PN guidance using LQR. So, the system dynamics is remember this is uh, y double dot okay, is a t minus a m and something like uh, Okay, let us not uh, okay, let us have a small correction here. We will uh, in our formulation purpose we will also make it compatible rather. So, we will tell okay, this is y double dot is uh, uh, a I mean a m minus a t concept actually. So, we will have plus a m minus a t. So, like that actually that makes us makes our life easier for derivation sort of thing. Okay, so, this uh, we will go ahead and then this y double dot is this uh, restriction I mean this constraint. And first case that we will talk is a t is 0, the lateral acceleration command for, for the target that you are assuming is 0, that means target continues to move in the same, di same direction basically. So, when you have target acceleration 0, then y double dot which is v dot, v dot actually, y dot is v, so y double dot is v dot, so v dot is m, so this is the constraint actually. So, that what you are assuming is uh, eight, uh, I mean a t. Uh, Okay, assumption is actually wrong here. Okay, what you are assuming here is uh, a t equal to zero. Okay, that's what you are assuming. Okay, so this is uh, next case. We'll see that a t is constant and all that. Right, right now we'll see a t is zero. So the, this is why this is why v dot is a m actually. Now performance index. Obviously, I'd like to have minimum lateral acceleration. I want to generate a minimum uh, induced drag uh, basically. So minimum lateral acceleration makes sense. So, this is what I want to minimize subject to this cons these two system dynamic equation very simple actually. Initial state is known to me why, why not v not and final state is also known to me what I want to do is y f has to go to 0 whereas v f is free actually. Okay. So, if this is the very standard way we can start and you can put some Hamiltonian and things like that essentially you can see that it is also a LQR problem. Okay. This is a linear system dynamics with the quadratic recurve function. So, you can directly get it using LQR theory also and that is what you have done in one of the previous lectures uh, using the state transition matrix solution and things like that. Now, here we will uh, we'll, uh, directly go through this uh, Hamiltonian uh, sort of necessary conditions and all that. So, we put Hamiltonian like this. Now, optimality conditions tells us that there are three things state equation, optimal control and co-state. So, this is a state equation and then optimal control tells us that ls by del m has to be equal to 0. That means, lambda 2 has to be minus a m uh, sorry a m has to be minus lambda 2 actually. So, once you get lambda 2 we are done, but how do you get that lambda 2? So, the, for that we have to see the co state equation also. It, it fortunately it turns out that lambda 1 dot is 0 because Hamiltonian does not contain y where it is uh, first state is y and Hamiltonian is not a function of y. So, lambda dot is partial derivative of Hamiltonian with respect to y which is 0. So, lambda 1 is essentially a constant. Similarly, lambda 2 dot is del s by del v which happens to be minus lambda 1 and lambda 1 is c 1. So, we can put c 1 there. Now, lambda 2 happens to be this one minus c 1 t plus c 2 actually. Then here we can invoke this uh, this transversality conditions to evaluate this c 1 c 2 sort of thing. So, one of the transversality condition is lambda 2 at t f has to be equal to 0 because v of t f is free basically. So, now lambda 2 of t f is uh, if you put t equal to t f this is what it is. So, you get uh, this constraint equation and hence c 2 is nothing but c 1 into t f. So, we have a constraint equation, but they are not able to uh, when we are not able, not yet found the values for c 1 c 2 then only we are done. We find c 1 c 2 then lambda 2 is known and then uh, lateral acceleration is known to us actually. So, how do you get that? One equation is available. What is the second equation? With that, that also you have to impose that y of t f has to be 0 actually. For that, we need a solution of uh, this uh, uh, conditions. Okay, so, the, now we come back to the system dynamics equation for where we want to integrate the, the v dot equation and then y dot equation things like that actually. So, we have this uh, lateral acceleration which is minus lambda 2 is something like this minus c 1 times uh, t f into t the C 2 is T f actually right. So, now we put it C 2 equal to T f it will turn out to C 1 into T f minus T. So, that is what it is. 
and then uh, you can apply first find v and apply the boundary condition. So, v dot is a m. So, v nothing but uh, this one and a m is something like this. So, a m is substitute that you get v dot you got integrate one time and then you will get uh, something like k v which is constant of integration minus the integral of that which is c 1 times t f t and uh, because of t is t square by 2 h so, now we apply the boundary condition that equal to t naught v equal to v naught ok. So, that means k v is nothing but v naught. So, k v once you put that is so that means v is nothing but k v, k v is v naught here. So, v naught minus this expression actually. Now, I go to y dot expression and then tell y dot is v. So, now v I know v is something like this. So, I put it here and then we integrate one more time and tell ok this is my y actually. And this integral uh, constant, constant of integration is evaluated again at the t equal to 0 and t equal to 0 you have y equal to y naught. So, that will give us that k y is nothing but y naught actually. And hence, t equal to t, I mean we got the, the value for k y now. So, the entire thing will, will turn out to be ok, but at t equal to t f, y f is also 0 that is the misdistance actually. So, the 1 0 misdistance in y direction. So, we put everything here that is equal to 0 and this will give us the finally, the constant that you are looking for is C 1 actually ok. So, C 1 into T f minus T that is remember that that is your later resolution. So, now we got C 1 here. So, then the optimal guidance law you can uh, this is because it is like that and I tell ok I will define something like time to go which is nothing but T f minus T which is repeatedly used in guidance literature. And also is the initial time is nothing but the current time that uh, so that means T equal to 0 I can assume. So, essentially time to go sometimes it is written as capital T sometimes as T go essentially with the assumption that T equal to 0 is nothing but T f actually ok. So, A m ok assuming that current time is the initial time is nothing but something like this uh, expression actually minus 3 over time to go square uh, times y naught plus v naught into time to go ok. Now, interestingly so happens that if you look at the engagement uh, geometry and then you, uh, you have this approximation sin sigma equal to sigma, the sigma is y over r that is what uh, we mentioned in one of the slides before. Now, if y over r, r is nothing but v c closing velocity along r times t f minus t. So, if you take sigma dot, sigma dot turns out to be like this, this denominator times uh, dot of the numerator like standard formula. And it turns out to be like this. So, if you t 1 t you cancel out and all. So, and v c you take it this way. So, it so turns out that v c times sigma dot is nothing but this expression. And this expression is something that you are getting here basically ok. So, that is why you are getting this this kind of thing ok a m equal to minus 3 v c sigma dot. And also remember this is nothing but a m and this small sign uh, sign incompatibility if you see that this is minus or plus again depends on the definition of v c. Ok, and here a definition of VC we have used V, I mean uh, something like VM minus VT, but uh, if you take VT minus VM then obviously it is going to be plus actually. Okay. So, this is uh, what it is. So, AM what we land up with in this optimal control theoretic derivation is also at the same PN actually. Ok. So, this expression is uh, the expression for this TPN sort of thing. So, the beautiful thing about this this guidance law is does not require estimation of the target resolution. That means, and target resolution uh, is actually a very difficult thing to estimate really. Okay, target velocity, I mean position you can, but velocity yes to some extent, but, uh, yes, uh, but estimating target acceleration is a different ball game altogether actually. It will be too much corrupted with noise and uh, the, the information may not be reliable actually. So, that uh, the idea here is it does not even require that. So, whatever error in all is is not able to uh, it will not respond to that actually ok. However, uh, if you really know a large component of the target resolution around which there is a deviation and all the small uh, you know, kind of uh, errors and all it is actually it makes sense to implement that and then then see actually. So, that leads to the concept of augmented PN. And where we are not, uh, we are telling that ok, at is not really uh, 0, but at is somewhat constant. It is a bias term about which there are some errors and all which, uh, which uh, I mean I may, I may ignore, but uh, essentially I will not ignore the bias component actually. It means uh, at is the constant component I am going to use it actually ok. So, if that is the case, uh, then this is something like this assumes that at is a constant that means it will and whenever something some, some lateral acceleration is constant, it results in some sort of a circular motion behavior. 
So, the so that is what is called it is a circular motion target assumption and all that actually. So, anyway, so the, the difference here is instead of a m it has become a m minus a t everything else is same actually. So, the v dot has become a m minus a t. So, accordingly there will be changes everywhere and they will tell Hamiltonian is nothing but that is a m minus a t now and nevertheless the optimal control is still minus uh, minus lambda 2 now that is not affected. Now, with the same same philosophy we start with lambda 1 dot lambda 2 dot solve it and lambda 2 will turn out to be like that again transversal equation you put same constraint you will get. And then you am is nothing but that, but the, the value of c 1 will be different here compared to what we had before because the boundary condition is different actually. <coughs> So, you follow the very similar steps and when it really comes to the final boundary condition, uh, it also remains same. The only only difference is this v dot actually, v dot is uh, this minus a t component it coming up and that complicates the matter a little bit. So, now we can talk ok this, this v solution also contains this minus a t term and hence every solution will also contain this minus a t term a t times t. So, but the procedure essentially remains same. So, find, find the y, so y dot is like this. So, you integrate and find y again apply the similar boundary conditions and and you will end up with this kind of expression where c 1 turns out to be an expression containing fairly similar to what we had one component and then there is a additional component actually. Okay. So, then optimal guidance law accordingly will turn out to be like this. So, we go back and put everything there and a m at uh, t 0 or t 0 means current time actually turns out to be in this this expression form. So, if you really simplify uh, try to simplify a little bit you co co contain the first component which is uh, uh, which happened something before ok you can for clarity you can put it something like a t p n if you want to yeah. So, that is so, augmented proportional navigation command guidance uh, guidance command is nothing but the same command which comes from true proportional navigation plus there is a component which comes from the target acceleration 3 by 2 i t actually. Okay. So, this is good as long as the target estimation itself is good at least the bias term is good actually, okay. but if that is not good then the performance can be inferior to p n also remove that actually. Okay. So, when we when we talk about uh, p n I mean in this this entire optimal control talk about uh, t p n anyway. Okay. So, if it is I mean if the target information is good then this is supposed to perform better, if the information is bad the performance can be worse actually. Very quickly you can also see the ZDM sort of ideas so, because that is uh, what is used uh, very rapidly very uh, vast amount in the missile guidance literature. The zero effort miss this concept is something like the distance that the missile will miss the target if there is no corrective measure. Okay, so that is a, that is a very neat concept, and using that there are several ideas uh, that pops up in the, even including current day literature actually. If you don't do any further correction, the direction correction of the velocity vector, let it go continuously wherever it wants to go, and then finally you'll end up with some missed distance, and that is called zero effort miss because there are no effort, and whatever miss happened happened actually. Then obviously, the the visual guidance can be interpreted this way the, the final zero effort means at t equal to t f or t go equal to 0 that has to be 0 actually ok. The correction should happen in such a way that the final z d m should be 0. Anyway, so mathematically speaking the z d m can be interpreted something like this y f minus this term this is the predicted y f sort of thing y naught plus uh, y naught dot times t go this is the predicted t f predicted y f and hence the z, z is nothing but y f minus this quantity ok. So, what is the z d m rate that is the that is what we want to impose as a system dynamic equation. So, z, z dot is this one where you assume that uh, y f is a fixed quantity. So, y f dot is 0 and then if you tell ok this uh, t I mean t go dot is nothing but minus 1 ok or t go by definition is this. So, t go dot is nothing but minus 1 with t f constant. Okay, so, that minus 1 if I put this becomes plus y naught. So, these two terms also cancel out. So, it lands up with like something like this actually. Okay. 
So, y got y not double dot times t go and we also know that a m is nothing but y dot. So, this z dot is minus a m times t go actually. So, this becomes a constant equation to impose in the system dynamics uh, as a system dynamics in the formulation. So, again this concept remains same. So, minimize the let, uh, the same lateral resolution, uh, but subject to this uh, single z, z dot remember this is a single equation now it is not it is not a uh, uh, vector it is a scalar equation constraint. So, algebra becomes much easier also in a way. So, we have this Hamiltonian optimality conditions again co state equation it turns out that lambda is just a constant and then optimal control it turns out that a m is nothing but t go times lambda if you put it here and then that is equal to 0. So, a m nothing but t go times lambda. Now, the 0 effort uh, miss uh, dot since this is this is the equation z dot equal to that. So, a m equal to that. So, you put it back here. So, z if you integrate it, it turns out to be something like this and then you put the boundary condition that when t go equal to t go initial t go then z is z naught and when t go equal to 0 finally, then z equal to 0. Remember this z dot equation actually develops backward in some sense actually. Yeah. So, anyway, so this is uh, if you interpret this uh, if you put these boundary conditions then it turns out that k z is nothing but z naught. So, that this z is nothing but that and then if you put additional boundary condition like this then this is nothing but 0 equal to z naught times this one. So, lambda you can get a solution like this very easily. Now, once you get lambda the your a m is nothing but t go times lambda. So, a m is nothing but 3 times z naught by t go square. So, what you have interpreted that a m in the previous lectures is something like uh, like this ok. It has been rep represented as something like this actually. It's a, either you can have a m equal to this expression minus 3 by y over t square plus b by t or you can have uh, minus 3 v c times sigma dot or the same expression you can write it as 3 times uh, something like z m z d m by t go square actually ok. Alright. So, 3 equal to a m is nothing but z naught by over t go square. So, initial z m by t go square. So, if you somehow compute this z naught ok. Uh, okay, so z naught, uh, okay, z by definition is like that. So z naught is if you put all these initial values of t go and things like that. So the, if you compute z naught, uh, that is a, every instant you compute the z d m, that is your uh, uh, current value of z d m, and then put it there, and you will get it. Uh, what do you want actually? Okay, not that. All right, let's go to that. Okay, so this is where we are actually. All right. Now, finally, well, uh, we'll also see we'll uh, different application and tell. Okay, can we really do something better? Because we are using optimal control theory. So, going and, and finding out mean distance zero is not the only condition actually. We need to do a little better than that. So, then this idea of terminal aspect angle and constraint guidance comes. Uh, so, that means, uh, you are not only supposed to go to the target and hit it, but also you have to hit in a particular angle of the velocity vector ok. So, that that concept uh, uh, leads to this uh, this terminal angle constraint guidance sort of thing. So, this is uh, again uh, different uh, we will go back to this formulation one ok. Uh, what we had with the target resolution 0, but if there is a boundary condition that is also changed actually. V, f, v of t f is not free anymore, but V of t f is just uh, I mean this is the desired angle ok. And using this V times 10 uh, 10 mu if you put it that way that is our V f that is what we want actually V of t f has to be V f. Now, if you see this uh, this entire formulation I mean just a uh, close note of it. Uh, you we know this optimal control theory framework and you know the problem objective. So, once you formulate this objective and put it in the proper mathematical framework rest of the things are simply algebra actually. So, we do not have to I mean break our head thinking so many things about geometric concept how the trajectory shaping should happen all sort of things. It will automatically take care of the, all those concerns through a mathematical formulation and that is the beauty of optimal control and that is why I call nat it is naturally geared up towards uh, this path finding problems actually. And as a missile guidance should be naturally falls out from optimum control theory. So, the everything remains same, only is a little bit change in the boundary condition. Of course, you have, when you account for this boundary condition, B of T f is uh, that one, the obviously your solution nature is going to change, you will end up with a different formula actually. 
All right, so it starts similar way. Okay, again, Hamiltonian is that system state equation is like that. Control is the equation is like that. So you have m equal to minus lambda two. Then co-state equation, you have this lambda one dot is m uh, zero. So lambda one is c one. Lambda two dot is again minus c one. So you have the same expression for lambda two t also. Now optimal control equation again similar minus lambda two, which is c one t times c two. The question is how the c one and c two will be different here. So we have this v dot again. We go ahead and solve the system dynamic equation now. V dot is m, which is like this, and hence v. If you integrate it, you will get something like this. So the integration constant, but at t equal to zero, we know v is v naught. So we have this k v equal to v naught. So ultimately, if so we put k v equal v naught, then v is nothing but v naught plus c one t square minus c one t square by two minus c two t. The thing is, we have to still know c one c two actually. So we have this optimal guidance law, which is, uh, I mean, this uh, uh, for deriving that we need this uh, uh, expression for uh, y also because we want to utilize the boundary condition for y. So we now put y dot is v, which is nothing but this, and then after integrating, we have this additional integration constant again from an initial condition that t equal to zero, y equal to y naught, we'll get k y equal to y naught. Okay, so we'll get from this expression we'll get this uh, this expression for y. So we have this expression for v and this expression for y. Now this is this. Uh, I mean, we now are ready for applying the terminal boundary condition, which is given in terms of Vf and Yf actually. So at t equal to Tf, we are Y of Tf is zero and V of Tf is Vf. That's what is given to, uh, as constant equation for the problem. So that means when you go, when you substitute this in this expression and that expression, we will end up with these two equations. Now there are two equations and two unknowns, C1 and C2. So we can always solve for this, and after solving, we will get something like this actually. I can I suggest that you solve it yourself. You can solve it either in a vector matrix formulation or simply using this method of elimination. There is only two variables anyway. So you write c two as a function of c one and then put it back here and, and solve for c one and then come back and solve for I mean get the expression for c two. That's what uh, lead to something like this. So we got everything that we wanted. So that means uh, this time to go uh, information again we put it something like this. By the way, this time to go when somebody talks about it is also like there are this crit critical parameter in optimal missile guidance. And normally, you take this is your LOS and something like R is my LOS distance. So T go is approximated typically by R by this V C. V C is uh, closing velocity. V C is typically negative. So normally, we will put minus by R by V C. So this is the expression that is heavily used as approximate time to go. But there are there are many different ideas for estimating this time to go in a better sense. The again the argument is it is again getting updated. So obviously it will uh, I mean it's not that bad and it happens to be like that. But any time the you use uh, uh, you rely on this uh, update sort of ideas, then uh, the fluctuations uh, will be large actually. And it will keep on getting uh, different values at different point of time, and hence your entire magnitude will become different. So your uh, control oscillations will become more actually. When, so to avoid that, uh, it is better that you estimate a good TGO which doesn't fluctuate much actually. Now for that, you have to assume circular path. This path, I mean, depending on the trajectory shaping that you are talking, essentially that talks about the entire path, the line integral of the path divided by average velocity on the path. Then you will get a very good estimation of TGO. I will not digress too much on that. You are encouraged to read many things on that actually. But this is something that people conveniently use actually. Anyway, so you define back uh, which is t go, and go back to the expression that our lateral acceleration uh, is nothing but c1 t minus c2. So we have got c1 and c2 now. So we put it back here c1 and c2, and uh, okay, and simplify a little bit. That means with t equal to zero, t go will be turn out to be tf, and things like that. You simplify a little bit, it will turn out to be just uh, t equal to zero. So this one t will go, and only c two minus of that, so it will turn out to be like this actually. Okay, so this is, this is uh, you can very clearly notice that there is a terminal miss component, and there is a aspect angle component. This this component came because of the formulation actually. So you can see now the power of optimal control. And also in these two D things, it can be extended to three D. So simply by mathematical formulations and all that actually. So that 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 is possible also. So that's what I mean. Various things you can talk about uh, while formulating the guidance problem in the framework of optimal control theory. So some concluding remarks. Uh, in general, missile guidance turns out to be a very fascinating field in my view. 
and then the guidance uh, concepts can be used for several applications which is even more exciting okay it is not necessarily only missile guidance i have shown you various applications in one of the slides including the exactly the opposite problem which is collision avoidance that is also we can formulate and use it in a, in a good way then linear quadratic optimal control theory offers a very good platform for optimal guidance leading to very good closed form expressions actually and obviously tigo happens to be a concern but various time to go estimation ideas exist in the literature which can be incorporated for better better loss actually then extension to non linear formulations are topics of current research uh, essentially this uh, beauty of closed form solutions will be compromise for for numerical solutions but as long as you get numerical solutions in real time things should be all right actually and those will be much much more, more, more powerful compared to this linear approximation uh, guidance loss and there you will talk about the real vehicle dynamics as a constraint uh, equation uh, so then the the solution nature will be much more relevant actually so so we'll see all that as we go along in this lecture series actually so with this application uh, sort of uh, one lecture i thought uh, it gives you a good motivation and uh, uh, an idea of why you want to read more so in the application sense we can talk various challenging problems in general actually all right i will stop here thank you